Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. In this video, I'm colouring in this creepy as hell eye that I drew recently. You can check out the inking video if you want to see that process first. You can also check out the story video for the creepypasta White with Red, which this drawing was for. But in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the drawing process, maybe talk a bit about the creepypasta, and maybe talk about some random stuff which is completely unrelated and probably not of any interest to anyone apart from myself. I'm really selling this video, aren't I? It's gonna be a good one. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the white with red creepypasta video. I had a lot of fun making that video. It was a lot shorter than my other ones, so it was a lot more relaxing to make. It still took a lot of time. But compared to some of the other ones that I've made, it was really easy. <laughs> The Tiki Toby one was just ridiculous. I'm kind of dreading covering some of those larger stories that I know you guys want to see. I'm pretty sure Clockwork is a really long story, and I know a lot of you guys want to see that one, so I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> Although I do think the drawing will be pretty cool for that one. So one day. Another issue that I have when I make these videos, I do all my editing on my laptop, and the hard drive is pretty close to full. And when I upload all the footage onto my computer and I'm doing the editing, my computer really starts to struggle. So I always get worried about covering the larger stories because I don't want to run out of space halfway through editing. Then I've got to delete stuff. And that pretty much happened with the Tiki Toby one. So any story that's larger than that, and even stories that are a little bit smaller than that, still really struggle on my computer because it's only getting more full. So I really need a new hard drive or something for it. But I use a Mac. Yes, I am one of those people. <laughs> so it's a little bit harder to customize. I really need a new computer, I think. So I should look into that. I just hate upgrading computers. There's always something that goes wrong. I'm not really a computer person, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing. When something's working, I just want to stay with it while it's working. Keep doing what I'm doing. As soon as I try upgrading, I know something happens and it's just a big headache. So I always hate doing that kind of stuff. First world problems. Complaining about computers. I think we just take so much of this stuff for granted that we've got now. I remember back when I was a kid. I'm 23 now, I turned 24 in October. Coming up really soon, so I'm getting old. But back in my day, when I was a young whippersnapper... We had dial-up internet and the slowest computers imaginable. So it's improved a lot since then, so why am I complaining? But anyway, let's talk a little bit about the creepy pasta. Like I said before, I really enjoyed this story. It was a short one, it had a little bit of a twist at the end. It wasn't like super scary or anything, but it just had a creepy vibe to it, which I enjoyed. I wasn't too sure if I wanted to do this drawing for this story because it kind of gives away the twist at the end, but it was kind of obvious anyway, so I think a lot of people would have seen that coming. Plus, there's probably a bunch of you guys- Ow. I just bashed my elbow on my table. What I was trying to say before I was viciously attacked by my stationary table is that a bunch of you guys have probably already read the creepypasta. You know what's happening. I wanted to draw an eye because they're fun to draw. Creepy eyes especially. And I eh, eh, think it turned out pretty cool. I can't believe I just said that. That was so lame. Lame puns. That's how low I'm stooping. That's awesome. Is there such a thing as a non-lame pun? I don't think there is. They're all lame. They're just terrible. But they're kind of satisfying as well. I think we've all got that one friend who just makes the most cringe-worthy puns. It's actually embarrassing. Luke, I'm calling you out. I know you're probably not watching this video, but if you are, you've got to stop, man. I think it's not even the pun that's funny, it's the reactions from everyone else who just look at you with a slight look of disgust and why did you just say that, I really don't like you type of look in their eye. And for some of us people with a twisted sense of humour, it's oddly satisfying. But I'll try and restrain myself in future videos, because you guys mean so much to me and I wouldn't want to put you through the pain of some of my terrible jokes but I probably will anyway, so I take it back. <laughs> Recently, I went to the movies and saw Blair Witch, and it's pretty bad. 
can't really sugarcoat that one. It is really bad. There were some cool ideas. I actually haven't seen the first Blair Witch Project, I think it's called. For some reason I haven't seen it, I'll have to check that out. But the most recent one is pretty bad. There's kind of some cool ideas in the film. I won't really spoil it for any of you guys who go see it. Even bad horror films, there's kind of like a guilty pleasure in watching them. I don't know why. But it was a pretty frustrating film. And you know it's a bad movie when the credits roll and everyone's getting up and they're like, yeah, that was shit. Like, I could literally hear most people saying how terrible it was as it finishes. So that's definitely not a good sign for a film. I've been in cinemas before and the film's finished and people have started clapping. And I'm like, who are you clapping to? The directors are not in the cinema with you. No one gives a shit, just shut the f*** up. <laughs> Alright, I'm being a bit harsh. I'm just pretty cynical sometimes. When I see people enjoying themselves too much, I'm thinking, really? It was okay, but it wasn't that great. But I think I also do it in reverse, where someone's bashing something and saying how terrible it is. And then I'll have kind of counterpoints saying, well, this point was okay and they did this pretty well. I don't know if I'm just difficult and I like to argue with people. I don't really like to argue, but I always like to have an opposing opinion or at least try and balance it out. I don't know, maybe I'm just difficult. <laughs> I think I just don't like being one-sided, or when people are one-sided about things and then don't notice any of the other opposing points of view, because I think everything's more complicated than just black and white. There's always reasonings for different things, so I think I try and bring that into the conversation when I can. And if that's difficult, then I guess I'm difficult, but whatever. So Blair Witch. If you're a fan of a bunch of young adults being lost in a forest at night, shining their torches around looking for each other, you will love this movie. If you're like me and you get sick of horror films relying on the whole thing being at night, barely being able to see anything and trying to do jump scares which aren't scary at all, you'll find it slightly boring and kind of frustrating because it had potential. Just like what your parents think about you. Alright, that was uncalled for. <laughs> I'm savage today. For you guys who are interested in the drawing process, what I'm doing now is adding some shading with my Prismacolor pencils. I always like to do this on top of my Copics, that means I can add some extra colours, add some more shading, smooth out some areas that might need it. I like doing some shading with a black pencil as well. This just helps create more contrast, I can darken the areas that need it, and this will make the eye look a lot more 3D and shiny like I want it to. I like doing this towards the end of the drawing with my Prismacolors because they're a lot more forgiving than Copics. If you just need to tweak some areas or add a little bit of colours to certain spots, you can just do that really easily and just slowly build it up. With Copics, you can't stuff around in one area for too long, otherwise your paper gets destroyed. Depending on what paper you use, obviously, some of them are more sturdy and you can work on the blending for a bit longer. I always get a lot of people asking what the hell I'm doing in this stage. I'm scraping off some soft pastels with a chisel thing and then blending it with the tissue. It's a really subtle effect but it adds a bit of soft blending and helps blend everything together really well. Some colours work better than others. I get a couple of people asking what brand of pastels I have. It doesn't matter. I think if you get soft pastels they're all pretty similar, just choose the colours that you like. You can use the same technique with pencil sharpenings, but I don't find it works quite as well because they're a little bit rougher so it's harder to get a smooth blend, but you can try that out if you don't have soft pastels. We're coming to the end of this drawing. I hope you guys liked how it turned out. I think it looks pretty cool. If you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing, follow me on Instagram. I'm always posting lots of photos there, so if you want to see more of my art, definitely check that out. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, that would be awesome. And like always, I will catch you guys next week in next week's drawing video. But his grip on Tom is loosening. I'm so sorry, Helen. Tom falls. Helen closes his eyes, scared to look at what's going to happen.